Hi and welcome to tutorial 109 in this series of programs and tutorials that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not familiar with our website, it is markplex.com, that's markplex.com, and there you'll find uh, a substantial number of tutorials and programs to help you learn TradeStation Easy Language. Now in this tutorial, I was asked how to go about calculating the length of time of a volume bar. And so what we're doing in this program is we're calculating that time to the nearest second and uh, we're plotting a histogram on the chart. And you can see I've already created the program and I've already got it applied to a couple of charts here you can see developing at the moment. But what I'm going to do is I've also created a um, demo program and deleted most of the functionality. So I'm going to go back and uh, try and develop it again. Now, what I'm going to do is develop it in the most simple way and then add a couple of uh, things which will improve it as we go along, which uh, which you might be interested in. So it's a fairly simple program, but there are a couple of things that you may find of interest as we go through that make it perhaps a little more uh, in in depth. So let's go to the uh, the program that I've written. You can see it's there. You're welcome to um, type it in yourselves and uh, and use it or learn from it. But also if you want to pay for a download then you can do that as well. Also I am making this uh, free for Gold Pass members to save them some typing. So here is the development program. I've already put in the namespace and some variables we're going to be using and uh, cleared the print log. So what we're going to do in the most simple way of doing this is to say if bar status for data one is equal to two, in other words the last tick on the bar, um, then begin and we're going to say t span which is a time span object that we declared up here is equal to bar date time minus bar date time one bar ago like so now bar date time if you right click you can see what that is and it is a, a date time object and bar date time shows the value for a specific bar and then you define how many bars ago you wish to use and there are also several field names that you can uh, gain access to additional information but when you take one subtract one bar date time from another bar date time you get a time span which is what we're calculating here and what we're going to do is we're going to plot the, the value in seconds of that time span so we just can say t span and then the uh, total seconds is what we need, like so. So we're just going to end, our begin end. I'm going to verify that. Now, as I said, I've already got it applied to the charts, but I just need to turn it on. So I'm going to go format analysis techniques. I'm going to turn off the uh, original program and then turn on the development program. Now you'll see immediately that things are looking a little strange. Let me just uh, make these a little weightier so you can see them better. But you'll notice that when we get to a, a time when we change the day, a new day, uh, in other words, the date is different from the, the, uh, the previous bar's date, we get this enormous bar. The reason for that is in doing this program, we're assuming that the uh, end of the previous bar is equal to the start of this bar. Now, for most of the time, that probably works pretty well, but when it is the first bar of the day and there is a, a, a gap, as there is in this ym.d symbol, then you'll see that we get a problem with that. So the first, the first thing that I want to do is add a little bit of a, a change to try and take care of that. And it's not an exact way of doing it, but it, it will suit our purposes. So what we're going to test for is, is this a change a new day? So we're going to do that by going if day is not equal to, or rather if date is not equal to the date of the previous bar, then t-span, 
just going to copy this to save a little bit of typing then t-span is equal to the bar date time remember that's going to show us the um, the, the time at the end of the bar minus well the uh, we know the you can find the session start uh, session end time session start time and so what we're going to do is um, is we're going to put in the the time the the date time of the session start time so we're going to go date time dot and uh, we can get from el date and time like so and then that's asking for a couple of pieces of information the date and the time well we know the date it's just today's date and we know the time because there is a keyword for that and that is session one start time like so so if the date is that then that else t-span is going to be equal to how we calculated it before so just going to refresh or rather uh, verify that and uh, look at the chart and you'll see now even though the day has changed that uh, we actually do get a, uh, a more reasonable plot and that is assuming that the session started at 1530 and uh, that certainly works for this symbol although in actual fact the the bar could have started a little later a few seconds later so um, so with this method we're still not entirely sure that that the times are correct but probably close enough for the purpose of this program okay so we're going to make one final enhancement and that is uh, we're going to use if uh, we're getting real-time bars we're going to capture the actual start time of the bar and do the subtraction from the end time as before so let me just explain how we're going to do that the first thing we're going to do is for the uh, the bar that's closing we're going to see if it is real time bar and if it is we're going to set up uh, a boolean um, variable new bar to say yes the next bar is a new bar then we're going to capture the start time of that new bar and we're going to use that in our calculation so probably doesn't make a lot of sense but let me just uh, so at the end of the bar we're going to add another condition here and we're going to say if get app info and then the uh, the one that we want to use is ai real time calc if that is equal to one then we know that we're now getting real time uh, ticks so then we're going to say then new bar equals true just like that now we're going to add a little bit of code above here and we're going to say if so so in other words that is set at the last real-time tick of the last bar so we're now entering a new real-time bar we're going to say if new bar is equal to true you don't need to say is equal to true because that's just uh, the way it is and it is uh, a real-time bar and uh, I'm not sure that's entirely necessary because we've already established we're getting um, real-time bars but it doesn't make any difference then begin now we've got to do a couple of things here we're going to set new bar to be false because we don't want to capture a time again for this particular bar and uh, we're going to set bar open is equal to bar date time so that is a date time object for the open of the bar say end okay so what we should now be doing for real-time bars is storing the uh, date time object of the opening the time of the opening tick so having done that we can now go in and uh, change the rest of our program a little bit and uh, we're going to say if it is not a real-time bar so if is equal to zero or the uh, bar open is equal to null in other words that hasn't been set yet then begin and we're going to do essentially what we did before 
like so. But if this is a real-time bar, in other words, if the, uh, the bar open has been set and it's no longer null, then tspan is equal to bar date time minus the bar open value like so and then we plot as before and one one final thing i just want to do here just so that we know that we've started to get real time bars coming in is just change the color of plot one if it is a if bar open is not null in other words we've had the first time where we've had a, a bar open time set so if we can do that if bar open not equal to null then set plot color for plot one to green like so okay so let me verify that see if we've made any errors I'll go to the chart so what we should see is because we uh, applied the program when we were away through the bar in other words we probably didn't capture the start time of this particular bar uh, what's going to happen is this the, the next bar to be drawn here or rather plotted on the chart should be red and then the following bar after that should be green because that's calculated using a real-time bar open time so if we just watch the uh, we the chart we should see that occurring Okay, so we had a red bar formed and now we've had the, the first uh, green bar formed, which means that that was set using a real-time bar open time. Now in the actual original program, I also included a couple of print statements. So what I'm gonna do is just go back, turn off this development program and uh, turn on the original program that's available to download. And uh, we're just gonna look at the, the print log. And uh, let me just, while this is working away, just look at the, um, the actual print statements. So what I've done is in the, um, the first one, which is uh, seeing if we've got a, a real-time bar and new bar has been set to true, I've added a print statement, which is looking for basically the open time, bar open to string. It's just saying what that bar open is. And also what I've done for the the bar status one equals two uh, i've added a print statement here when it is a real time bar and that's showing the uh, the closing time which uh, we get by bar date time to string and remember that's happening on the last tick and then if we go to the print thing now you'll see what's happening and generally you'll find that the closing time is actually equal to the open time remember this is just accurate to the second so what's going on in the, uh, the milliseconds they may not be exactly the same mostly they're the same but what you will for example here we have a situation where the closing time is uh, 401 uh, 10 seconds and then the open time 401 11. anyway i hope you might find this program useful uh, if you're a gold pass member you can download it at no cost if you spot any errors or have any questions then feel free to email me martin.witzker m-a-r-t-y-n dot w-h-i-t-t-a-k-e-r at markplex.com thank you